Coming up next, remembering a Fargo teenager who was a light to others. The signatures are coming in, parents wanting to clean house on the Fargo school board. Plus, frustration setting in, one local business desperately trying to keep its doors open with limited staff. Valley News Live at 5 starts right now. This is Valley News Live at 5. We begin this evening with breaking news. Fargo police have a large perimeter set up right now near Main Street and 25th Street South. A call to Red River Regional Dispatch says they received a call for a robbery in that area, but that information has not yet been confirmed by police. Joining us now live is Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley. Bailey, what do you know? Andrea just got done speaking with a neighbor. She didn't want to be identified or talk on camera, but she did tell me that it was just about an hour ago. She was in her yard planting some flowers and she says all of a sudden a, what looked like a kid came racing through this back alleyway that you see here behind me and uh, was racing through and then you can see there's a bike ditched right by that uh, garage there. She says he ditched that right there and then ran on foot. She says it wasn't much longer after that when a large police presence was also in her backyard. She says that it wasn't long after that when all of those police officers then had their guns drawn and were yelling at her to get inside of her house, saying that they were going to soon have the dogs out. Now, all of this information has not yet been confirmed by police at this point. We don't know if anybody is yet in custody or where that robbery took place. Fargo police say they, they do anticipate to release more details very soon. For now, live in Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. All right, Bailey, thanks for that live report. Stick with Valley News Live as we continue to learn more about this breaking story. Quite a sight caught on dash cam Monday night by a police officer in Holly, Minnesota. Take a look at this. He was patrolling Hobart Street when lightning hit the Bell Bank right along Highway 10. Another angle of the lightning bolt can be seen from his body camera. You can see sparks fly from the building and the lights on the bank sign go out after the lightning strike. The bank tells us they had some minor computer and phone issues, but they are operating business as usual. Let's go right over to Hutch now for a first look at the forecast. Hutch. Andrea, thanks so much. We have a warning to tell you about. We've been for tra tracking some storms in the western reaches of Minnesota, extending up toward Lake of the Woods. Uh, they've been uh, strong with some hail producing cells, but right now where all the lightning is here in northern and central parts of Beltrami County, we have a severe thunderstorm warning. It's right over the Red Lakes area right now, so it's north of Bemidji, taking you in a little closer. The warning is in effect until 545. Storms moving northeast at 35 miles per hour, wind gusts to around 60 miles per hour possible, hail up to around an inch in diameter. Let's take a slice out of this storm. We can see this elevated pink up here. That is what we call an elevated hail core up to around 30,000 feet. So this part of the cell to the north and east of the lower Red Lake, probably up near the upper Red Lake, is uh, the most capable of some sizable hail right now as it continues its trek north and east. If this storm approaches, batten down the hatches. Make sure you're staying away from windows. Uh, also, stay out of or not around trees with all of the lightning that can be dangerous. And this is the area where we have a small risk for some or a couple severe storms tonight. We'll keep our eyes on the skies there. The rest of us, it looks hot and it looks humid and our better chance of storms comes on Thursday night late into Friday. So for Fargo tonight, 90s, cooling down in the 70s. Can't rule out a thunder shower, but most of this line is to our east. Minnesota will have more tonight. Okay, thanks such. Her presents, because me and her share a room, and just her being there was the most amazing thing. Like, I know I'm not alone. She was always right next to me. That was Phoenix Paulson speaking on what she will miss most about her sister Jupiter, the 14-year-old who tragically died yesterday after being brutally assaulted on Friday. Many people gathered outside Sanford Hospital to show their support and love. Jupiter's dad, Robert Paulson, did the honor of raising the donate flag, which had messages on it from friends and family. Jupiter's organs are being donated to help others. Her family members remember her as a girl with a big sense of humor and an even bigger heart. And then a poem for Jupiter. The opening line reads, I wish I was the rain because I would actually have a purpose. In death, Jupiter's organs will be used to help and save others' lives. Her mother says she will always remember Jupiter's smile, which would light up the room. She could walk into a room and if you were not feeling good, it was mom, 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 mama, mama. 
mom until I would smile. And then she would smile and she would go, I love you. Jupiter's father says doctors are still working to preserve her organs so they can be donated. When that's all finished, they will hold a walk of honor for Jupiter at the Sanford Hospital. Fargo Public School parents are hitting the pavement for the first time today in hopes of gathering enough petition signatures to recall four members of the Fargo School Board. Of the board's nine members, four of them are eligible for recall this year, which includes Dr. Tracy Newman, Jim Johnson, Seth Holden, and Nikki Gullickson. Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley caught up with organizers and parents this afternoon who say it's time to stand up for Fargo students. Despite the wicked heat and humidity, hundreds made their way to the two petition booths set up outside of Happy Harry's Rib Fest at the Fargo Dome today, collecting over 600 signatures within just a few hours. I'm super excited just to get to the signature point and um, you know be able to move forward and see what changes we can make. Petition signers didn't want to speak with me on camera today, but tell me it's time for change. Saying their frustration with the Fargo Public School Board involves teacher negotiations, mask mandates, and the board's overall lack of communication with parents and educators. People are not thrilled with the overstep in health. A lot of people are really upset about the school boundaries. A lot of people are really, really upset about just not being engaged in the conversation. We don't feel heard. We email, we call and we get no responses back and then the board does the complete opposite and doesn't give us any reasons why. Both women say so far Jim Johnson has garnered the most signatures of the four members up for recall. Something Allenberger says comes as no surprise. There's a long list and a lot of years of, uh, of issues that have come up, come up that Jim Johnson has been involved in. Allenberger says they're aiming for 4,500 signatures per each member, saying once those are collected and validated, a special election would be called sometime this summer or fall, something both women say would bring a more than welcome clean slate to the district. In North Fargo, Bailey Hurley, Valley News Live. To sign the petition, you must be 18 years old and have lived in the Fargo School District for at least 30 days. Fargo police are searching for the owner of a dog that bit someone this morning. It happened just before 8 in the area of 12th Avenue South and 14th Street. The dog and its owner left the area before the victim could get their information. Police are trying to track down the owner to figure out if the victim needs to get rabies shots. They say he's a white male, about 50 to 60 years old and under 6 feet tall. He was wearing a blue baseball cap and a black t-shirt with U2's Joshua Tree album on it. The dog is a yellow lab and was being walked on a green John Deere leash. If you have any information about this incident, contact Fargo Police. The struggles continue for Red River Valley businesses in desperate need of workers. Finding employees isn't the only high hurdle to clear. Getting them to show up regularly and preventing them from quitting after just a few days are two more difficult challenges to overcome. Valley News Team's J.C. Dodd tells us how a Moorhead restaurant is staying afloat with a bare bones staff. The new Moorhead Altoni's restaurant has only been open since May 13th and the owner says business is great. Ryan Alford says he's not struggling with a lack of customers, rather a lack of workers. I'm looking for servers, dishwashers, cooks, everything. He says it takes at least five people to run his restaurant and right now he only has four employees to cover lunch and dinner shifts six days a week. I got a couple part-time employees, but so it's just hard for me to be here from 8 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock at night. They're long days in the kitchen. Alford says the way things are going is just not sustainable. My staff just wore out and they do it all again the next day. Just desperate for help, you know. I like to have time off too and I've just been working from sunup to sundown every day. He says one of the most frustrating parts is when people just don't show up. You offer them a job and you're paying them more than what you can afford to pay them just to get them in the door and they don't even show up for the interview. Alford says if he doesn't find help soon, things are going to have to change. We cannot keep doing it like this. I'm going to have to change my hours if I don't get some more help. He adds that he wants to make his customers happy, but with being so short-staffed, it's hard to do. We're open and we need some help. <laughs> in Moorhead, J.C. Dodd, Valley News Live. According to the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, the Moorhead unemployment rate sits at 3.1 percent.
First responders practice their tactics and communication at Fargo's Hector International Airport today. It's a full-scale airport disaster exercise involving a plane carrying 62 passengers and four crew members that crashes upon landing. Volunteers are taking part as the passengers and crew members in the scenario. Flying is still one of the safest, you know, safest ways to travel. Uh, the reason we train for this is just in the event that, you know, God forbid this, an event like this does happen, that we are able to uh, really, really do this, to the community a service. The exercise is conducted every three years to meet FAA requirements and so that first responders can practice how they would respond in an airline emergency. Your burrito fix is about to get more expensive at Chipotle. Why prices are going up is still to come. And we're tracking thunderstorms. Check this out. A line of storms that are training looks like a train. One right after the other moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Severe storms near the Red Lakes area capable of one inch hail. We'll have the track of these and your forecast right after this.